Hi, this is Kronos with a video on getting started with a cryptocurrency wallet on your mobile phone. I'll be demonstrating the NewBits wallet called NewDroid from the NewBits team, but you could use the tips that I give in this video on any wallet, whether it's on iOS or Android, and what any cryptocurrency, whether it's Bitcoin, Litecoin, or some other coin. A lot of wallets work the same way, so you'll want to use similar steps no matter what you're setting up. The focus of this video is a couple of areas. First, making sure that if you lose the phone, you don't lose the Bitcoins or NewBits on your phone. And the second is if someone picks up your phone, they're not able to quickly spend your funds. Once you finish those two things, you're pretty much ready to go. So let's get started. All right, here I have the new Droid program running on my Android phone. And you can see I already have 2.5 new bits or about two and a half dollars on the phone. So I want to back up the phone so that if I lose it, I don't lose the funds. To do that, click the drop down in the upper right. Oh, I missed it. Let me try again. Uh, there we go. I hit the address book, I think. And then safety. From there, choose Backup Wallet. Now this is going to create a file that contains the private keys which allow you to spend the new bits. So if I lose the phone, I can load those private keys into another phone to spend the new bits. This file works just like a Word document or a text document. It's something you could store on a jump drive or on a uh, hard drive or back it up somewhere and allows you to keep it safe in case you lose the phone. First, you choose a password for the file, and this password is raw encryption being applied to the file. This isn't the same as using a password, for example, on your email account. If an attacker wants to get into your email and they try a couple of passwords, they're going to get locked out out of a couple of guesses. On the other hand, if they have this file, they can keep on trying to open it. They'll apply a password and then read the result to see if it's a valid wallet file. If it's not, they can try another one. So they can try over and over and over. This means your password needs to be very, very, very strong. So I recommend taking a very random password that you could never remember and then writing it down on a piece of paper. That way it can't easily be guessed. And if someone does steal the file, say out of your email account or off of your phone, they don't have access to that paper if it's in your house. So that allows you to keep things safe. So for this password, I'm just going to choose QQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQ
It is called tip for commit, and you can see it up there in the upper left, if you see my mouse right there. Tip for commit is a website where you can donate bitcoins to different projects, open source projects that people are working on around the world. So let's click see projects to see what we can donate to. You might recognize a couple of these projects if you're in and around the Bitcoin space. There's the purecoin.net project. I love that one. I've worked on it before. There is Open Bazaar, definitely one you should check out. It's a cool decentralized marketplace. And then there's Tip for Commit itself. I'll actually just donate directly to them because I think this is a great platform. So the way this works is if you are a programmer, you can contribute features and bug fixes to these projects and you automatically receive donations if your changes are accepted by the project manager. And the donations come from people like me who make donations. So it's a way to um, encourage improvements on the kind of software that you want to see developed. So let's jump straight into Tip for Commit here and here is a QR code on my screen. Let's jump back to the phone. Now I'll tap scan. Scan. Hey, I'm tapping scan. Oh, there was just a little delay there. Back to the browser and let's scan the QR code. There it is. I have scanned it. So we can see at the top, there is the code that I've scanned, 1NR6, etc. There's no way I would want to type that in, but I just held my phone up to that big square on my screen and the camera inside my phone automatically scanned that. So that was very, very convenient. Now, how much do I want to send? $1 worth of donation, which is actually one new bit. So under uh, amount to pay, I'll say one. And this will automatically integrate with the shapeshift, shapeshift service inside the phone. So, or inside the application, excuse me. So you can see the rate here is 243 new bits per Bitcoin. I'm actually donating Bitcoins, but the phone is going to convert new bits to Bitcoins on the fly, which is a really neat way to keep my currency in new bits, which is a stable value, and then uh, just convert it to Bitcoin when I'm ready to spend. So the rate is estimated not guaranteed, no problem. Let me enter my PIN, 1485 and we are ready to send. Shifting. Did that send? I think so. All right, so that's a donation to the tip for pin commit project. That was a lot of fun. Another thing I'd like to demonstrate to you in this video is restoring your wallet. Let's say you've lost your phone and you need to restore from that backup that you emailed to yourself. It's quite simple to do that. Let's say this is my second phone now, or I've just got a replacement here and I've installed the new Droid software. Now I want to restore my phone. I'll tap the three dots down here and under safety, choose restore wallet. Now I need to pick the file that was created when I backed it up. And if that's in my email box, I'll need to load that onto my phone before I get to this dialog. Um, but in this case, it's already here because I just backed it up. Enter the password that you chose when you backed it up, which in this case is QQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQQ
track the progress, tap the, the drop down up here on the right, and choose Network Monitor. This is a way for you to see the progress of synchronizing with the network. On the left here, you can see my peers, which is the other uh, computers that I'm connected to on the network, and on the right, my blocks. So you can see these blocks updating here uh, very, very quickly because blocks are one minute apart and they're loaded and downloaded quickly. And then here's the date of that block. So you can see I'm still in 2014. I have a little ways to go, but it's quickly climbing through time. So you can track your progress here. And to see if your wallet is in sync, you can simply go to Network Monitor and make sure that that date is very close to today's date. It'll actually say something like one minute ago or 30 seconds ago to let you know that you're up to date. Well, that's all it takes to set up a new wallet. It does not take much. First, back up the wallet file, send it to your email, and second, send a, set a spending pin. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below the video. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.